Hey everybody, Steve here in Quartzsite, Arizona, standing here in front of Silly Al's Pizza Restaurant. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it's closed. It may be closed for the entire season, I don't know. We've been coming here for years, for my mom's birthday, every year, probably since Silly Al's open, or at least since my mom moved down here 20 some odd years ago. I'm not really sure which was here first, but Silly Al's Pizza, in my opinion, has the best pizza in the world. I've had pizza all over the country, all over the world, and I've never had pizza as good as Silly Al's. If you haven't been here, definitely check it out the next time you are in Quartzsite. And if you're not actually planning to come to Quartzsite for a vacation or for an extended stay, you can just stop here on your way from Los Angeles to Phoenix or the other way and stop off for lunch or dinner. Behind me, I don't know if you can see the queue right there. That's the queue for Quartzsite. And just this side of the queue, of that, that little hill there, is Highway 10. It's the 10 freeway that goes from Los Angeles to Phoenix. So this is an easy stop and definitely worthwhile. If any of you have already eaten here, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you think it's the best pizza you've ever eaten. So my mom is turning 85 years old today. It's hard to believe. Last year she was just fine and we celebrated here. And like I say, pretty much every year for as long as I can remember, this is where we celebrated her birthday. And this year, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to. Here we are at Silly Al's on mom's uh, 81st birthday. Hey mom, how's your pizza? Mom, it must be good. She's, uh, she's digging into it. Is it all right? How's your pizza? <laughs> Oh, happy birthday. I believe it's still a copyright infringement to sing the lyrics to Happy Birthday. So I'll edit out the singing since I don't use copyrighted music. But this YouTube tune is approved to use. And I'm sure you all know how the song goes, so feel free to sing along. Right next door to Silly Owls is Tyson Wells Stagecoach Station Museum, and admission is free to the public. Wow, I can't believe that I've been coming to Silly Owls for decades now and also to my mom's post office, which is right across the street here, right there. And I've driven by here. This is the main street here in Quartzsite. And I've driven by here hundreds of times and never noticed this museum. Now you can see on the sign it says, Museum closed, see you next year. And I don't know if that's, if that's just because season is over or if it's because of the pandemic or maybe both. But I definitely plan to come back next year and take a look around and uh, visit the museum. And I'll share that with you when I do. Have any of you been here? And even though it's closed right now, it's still pretty interesting to look at just from the outside. The museum description sign reads, this was a stage stop between Ehrenberg and Wickenburg and points east. Travelers in the 1870s and 80s made their first stop here on eastward journeys from Colorado River. No grass, but good water, as the early desert guide indicated. Accommodations for passengers were crude. As you know if you've been watching my channel, lately when I've come out to take care of and stay with my mom, for a number of reasons I've been sleeping in my car. I thought I was roughing it, but compared to this Oasis Hotel, my SUV is more like a five-star luxury resort. I guess it's all relative, isn't it? While this stage stop is around 150 years old, with the exception of a few gas stations, fast food restaurants, and convenience stores, Quartzsite, Arizona doesn't seem to have changed really all that much. And being here today makes it pretty easy to imagine what it must have been like living back in the Old West. Okay, so now I need to head over to the post office across the street. Then I'm going to head up to, I think it's the Dollar General or the Dollar Store, to pick up some of the things my mom realized at the very last minute that she needed. I did my shopping for my mom before I came to visit her this week and I got here and she had a whole new list of things for me. She seems to, well she has a lot of free time on her hands in these days so I guess she sits around thinking about all the things she needs and wants so uh, as hard as I try to be efficient and just go to the store once a week 
I end up going two or three times because she needs so many things. And actually some things are really important she really does need. And she just waits. She doesn't tell me ahead of time. She, you know, because of her stroke, she's not really able to plan or think ahead. And so she doesn't realize she's out of something until she's completely run out and thrown the box or the container away. Then she thinks about it and starts to try to tell me what she needs. But since she can't really communicate very well, it's like a guessing game. It's like charades. And sometimes it's uh, very, very difficult for her and for me. And she gets very frustrated because she doesn't understand why none of us understand what she's saying. She just doesn't understand that uh, she had a stroke and is not able to communicate. So one thing I find so interesting about the uh, Quartzsite Post Office is that it's so small, they don't deliver mail to the house. So you have to, everyone has a P.O. box and you have to come pick it up yourself here. And ordinarily, this time of year, almost May, this parking lot would be empty. Most of the snowbirds would have already left by now. But because of the uh, virus, the, the pandemic, if you're coming from one state to another, quite often when you get back to where you're going, you have to self-quarantine for a couple of weeks. So at least this was what someone was telling me, that a lot of the, uh, the snowbirds here, they've just decided to stay here until the pandemic is behind us, so they don't have to do that. Many of you have asked how my mom is doing, so if you make it to the end of the video, I'll give you an update and you can watch her blow out the candles on our birthday cake. This year was very tricky for us, and I'm sure that some of you watching will find it pretty controversial what we decided to do to celebrate her birthday this year. Some of the aisles were pretty bare, but I was able to get what she desperately needed, and I was happy to see that there were very few people in the store. As I've mentioned before, Quartzsite is a pretty small town of about four to 5,000 residents. It's fairly remote, and so far they've had zero cases of the coronavirus. A large majority of the population here are senior citizens, and for the most part, they seem to be staying at home unless they have to go out. Because my mom has macular degeneration and is somewhat visually impaired, and because she recently had a very serious stroke that left her somewhat mentally impaired, she's no longer able to survive on her own, even though she thinks she is. My brother Robert, who lives in Florida, is planning to retire at the end of the year and move in with mom full time. But until then, her friend and neighbor Dorothy and I are doing the lion's share of taking care of her. But she's also been very fortunate to have many other good friends and neighbors who also visit and help her in so many different ways. Of course, all of us would prefer to stay in our own homes and not come out until the pandemic is behind us. But since mom can't survive on her own for even a week without us, that's just not an option. Before the COVID-9 virus decided to wreak havoc with everyone's lives, we were looking into possible assisted living options, but those all now seem to be less healthy options than allowing her to stay at home where she really wants to be. By the way, this is Main Street Quartzsite heading west back toward my mom's home. A couple of weeks ago, mom asked me what date it was, and I told her, and I also mentioned that her birthday was coming up in two weeks. She looked at me strangely, and so I told her the date of her birthday, and she said, no, that's not possible. Then I told her how old she was going to be, and she looked even more confused. And then she became angry and said, I think I would know my own birthday. Then she cried for a couple of hours and was depressed for most of the rest of the day. So we all decided that it would probably be best this year just to not mention her birthday and upset her. Dorothy said she still wanted to bake a birthday cake for the three of us, and just not mention that it was for her birthday. She's been doing so well, though, for the past two weeks, and this is her 85th birthday and possibly her last. So I decided to take a chance and risk the consequences. And when she got up this morning, I said, happy birthday. She looked at me like I was completely crazy, but after a few minutes, she said, thank you. A little while later, one of her good friends, who she hasn't seen in a while, called to wish her a happy birthday. And then she finally believed it and was very happy. A couple of hours later, Dorothy arrived with a cake and also said happy birthday, which made her even happier since she had no idea there was going to be a cake. Before we knew it, four of her other close friends and neighbors were knocking on the door to say happy birthday in person, and we ended up having a very brief, unplanned birthday party. Everyone was reluctant and none of us really wanted to be together in a group like this, but due to her situation, we really haven't had much of a choice. Since she isn't able to live on her own, and not one of us is able to live with or take care of her full time right now, not visiting her until this health crisis is over just isn't an option. So not coming into contact with each other or with her until this health crisis has passed also isn't possible. Sometimes there just aren't any good solutions to a problem and you just have to do the best you can. Okay, 
Okay, Pat. Yeah. Hurry up, Pat, before you go. Oh, just in time. I bet that's uh, lobber. That's me. Just oh, make, a, make a wish in below, Mom. Blow the candles. Hi. Uh, hi. Well, this is Robert here. Robert's Robert's <laughs> listening here. Here, Robert. There you go. Are you singing up? Is well, it happy birthday time yet? Yes. yes. Ready? Well, Blow. I think Two. Yeah. Yeah. Mom got them all on the first time. Yeah, it's very nice. I'll have to do a FaceTime with you on the room so you can see it. Me. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there in a month, so. And another round of happy birthday with my mom's close friends really made my mom's special day. <laughs> Who cares? I'm still alive. <laughs> even the dogs are down there singing too. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I have to say that this week I'm just completely blown away by the extreme generosity of this week's patrons. Thank you just doesn't come close to expressing the gratitude I feel toward my latest Patreon supporters, Dave Barry and Jen Marie Stiber or to my existing Patreon supporter, Stuart Chastain, who recently increased his pledge, or to Debbie Lewis, my latest PayPal supporter. Your super generous contributions and support of this channel will definitely help make future trips like this possible. So if you'd like to help support this channel, the best and easiest way to do it, absolutely free, is just to click the subscribe button. So as always, thanks for joining me today, everybody, and I hope to see you next time.